Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the recruitment of uh, leukocytes to the area of infection. Okay, so we're just going over the acute inflammatory response just to uh, put this subject in a perspective to keep it all sewed together basically. Okay, so uh, we are currently looking at type 1 activation and we're currently looking at the building up of, of an inflammatory exudate and what the point of that is. Okay, so we're talking about the fact that you bring in complement proteins and we've seen that one of the functions of the complement cascades being set off on the surface of the microbe is to coat the uh, microbe in C3B like this, uh, which then opsonizes the microbe, makes it more likely to be phagocytosed. Okay, so other purposes of the complement cascades are that you also produce C3A and C5A. Okay, now these are what are known as the anaphyla toxins, and they go back and stimulate mast cell degranulation. So these are a positive feedback loop, basically. So remember, the entire inflammatory response, all of type 1 activation, was um, caused by mast cells releasing histamine. Now these molecules that we are producing, C3A and C5A, are going to go back and they're going to act on receptors on the surface of mast cells. So you have a C3A receptor and you also have a C5A receptor. So this, for example, can be our C3A receptor. Okay, but you'll also have a C5A receptor. And C3A or C5A will bind to its corresponding receptor and cause mast cell degranulation, so cause further release of histamine, which will uh, give this positive feedback effect where uh, by histamine release is now causing more histamine release, basically. Okay, so that's a nice positive feedback loop. And finally, you can also form membrane attack complexes, which are abbreviated to MAC on the surface of pathogens, okay? And these basically uh, break down the integrity of the microbe cell membrane. So let me draw one of these, okay? So basically it's a great big tube that inserts into uh, the microbe's membrane here. So this is our microbe in red here, okay? And this is the membrane attack complex, the MAC for short. And what the MAC will do is it will disturb the integrity of the cell membrane. It's going to mean uh, that uh, the microbe can no longer control what moves across that uh, membrane. And now what's going to start happening is water is going to move into uh, the microbe cytoplasm by osmosis because the uh, osmolarity of the cytoplasm is so much higher than the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid. So water moves in and what this causes is it causes the bacterial cell or the microbe cell or the microbe structure if it's a virus to swell and then it all will burst basically. So that's called osmotic lysis when you burst due to uh, movement of water in via osmosis. It's known as osmotic lysis. Okay. So, that's the final way that complement can attack uh, pathogens. So it causes opsonization, it causes uh, a positive feedback loop of uh, release of histamine, and it causes uh, direct attack of the microbes itself by destroying the integrity of the cell membrane, allowing water to move into the cytoplasm via osmosis and causing osmotic lysis. Okay, so uh, the next... Um, the other things that are brought in uh, via uh, the inflammatory exudate are you also bringing coagulation factors from the blood. Now as soon as you bring coagulation factors out of the bloodstream and into the interstitial space, you begin the coagulation cascades. Okay. So coagulation factors usually have a very boring life. Usually they circulate round and round in the bloodstream and do absolutely nothing. But as soon as you move them out of the bloodstream and into the interstitial space, then uh, basically they meet molecules that they were never ever allowed to see before. They meet collagen and they meet 
tissue factor. And collagen and tissue factor set off both the uh, intrinsic and extrinsic coagulation cascade. Collagen sets off the intrinsic coagulation cascade. Tissue factor sets off the extrinsic coagulation cascade. And these coagulation cascades result in the transformation of a protein known as fibrinogen, also known as factor 1, into fibrin, also known as factor 1A, and then fibrin is polymerized into massive great strands, basically, known as fibrin strands. And these fibrin strands all join together to make a very uh, dense spider's web structure, basically, known as a fibrin meshwork. Okay, and in the site of infection, you're going to form this incredibly dense spider's web-like meshwork. And the, the idea of this is that it's going to um, intertwine amongst the pathogenic cells or the pathogenic structures. And it's going to contain them, basically, because they literally can't escape from the fibrin uh, meshwork. So it's going to stop the spread of the pathogen further. Because obviously the fear is that it could end up spreading into the blood. So um, the coagulation factors are trying to prevent that from happening. Okay, the final thing you bring in are the components of the calocrine kinin system. Okay, uh, and when you set off the calocrine kinin system, also occasionally known as the kinin cascade, it results in the production of two molecules. It results in the production of bradykinin, okay, and it also results in the production of another molecule known as calidin. Okay, and the function of these molecules is one, they go uh, back to the endothelial cells, okay, and they have a positive feedback loop. So they also have receptors on the endothelial cells, specifically the B2 receptor. So they're going to go and act on the B2 receptor on endothelial cells, and B2 also triggers type 1 activation. So histamine is not the only thing that can cause type 1 activation of endothelial cells. Bradykinin and calidin can also cause type 1 activation of endothelial cells. These two molecules also are very powerful pain-inducing molecules. Bradykinin is the most powerful um, well, what's the word? It's the, it's the molecule with the most powerful ability to produce pain known to man. So if you inject this into yourself, it will make you feel intense pain. Okay, so it's going to act on sensory neurons, which are specifically pain sensory neurons. Okay, so it's going to cause pain. Um, and this is what causes the pain associated with an inflamed area. And again, we'll call this in Latin. So, dolor is the Latin for pain. So, we've now got four of the five pillars of inflammation. Rubor, calor, tumor, and dolor. Now, the fifth one is also called, well, it's called functio lisse. Okay? Functio lisse. And this means loss of function. And of course, it's going to be the pain that also helps to give loss of function. So when you've got a damaged piece of tissue, then you're, you stop using that. Say your toe has undergone an inflammatory response. Maybe you've got an ingrowing toenail. Okay then you'll stop walking on that toe, and the pain will be associated with that. So uh, the effect on the nerves is going to produce pain, which is the conscious experience, and it's also going to stop you wanting to lose that, which of course is very tied in with pain. Um, but again, it's all um, part of this uh, inflammatory response being communicated to the brain, and bradykinin and calidin are two of the molecules that do that. Okay, so that's the calocrine kinin system, and the components that begin this calocrine kinin system, most of those come from the blood. So you need factor 12, Hageman factor, uh, you need Fletcher factor, also known as pre-calocrine, you also need high molecular weight kininogen, which also comes from the blood. The only one that doesn't come from the blood is low molecular weight kininogen. But if you're more interested in that, um, I have an entire video on the calocrine kinin system, where we go through it in full. Right, 
Okay, so now let's talk about um, the final thing, which is what this video is supposed to be on. And I've given you this background so that everything fits into place, hopefully so that you see it actually in context, uh, is we're going to talk about leukocyte extravasation. Okay, so what sort of leukocyte extravasation do you start up in type 1 activated endothelial cells? Well, you start off with um, neutrophil extravasation, and we'll see that in the next video.